Hello all, welcome to this video on Network Programming Lab. Today I'll be talking about Leaky Bucket Algorithm and its implementation in C. Let's begin with QoS. QoS or Quality of Service is a set of technologies that work on a network to guarantee its ability to dependently run high priority applications and traffic under limited network capacity. QoS technologies accomplish this by providing differentiated handling and capacity allocation to specific flows in network traffic. This enables the network administrator to assign the order in which the packets are handled and the amount of bandwidth afforded to that application or traffic flow. QoS is key to voice and video applications, email, interactive applications, batch applications and online purchasing. Looking into some of the QoS measurements, the first one is bandwidth, which is the maximum rate of transfer, which is also known as the speed of the link, throughput, which is the actual rate of transfer, latency, that is the delay, the amount of time it takes for a packet to traverse the network from the source to the destination, and jitter, which is the variance in latency, when the packets don't arrive in the same order as they were sent. Looking into the working of QoS, as businesses depend on the network to transmit information between endpoints, that data is formatted into packets. Network packets allow computers to organize the data similarly to envelopes packed in letters sent through the postal service. Essentially, the job of QoS software is to prioritize network packets to maximize the fixed amount of network bandwidth. The network can only transmit a limited amount of data at once. Therefore, QoS gives priority to the appropriate packets. Bandwidth is strategically allocated to deliver the highest service levels in a limited amount of time. QoS networking mechanisms for ordering packets and allotting bandwidth are queuing and bandwidth management tools. Before they can be implemented, however, the traffic must be differentiated using a classification tool. The classification of traffic, according to policy, ensures consistency and adequate availability of network resources for the most important applications. Now, queuing and bandwidth management tools are assigned rules to handle traffic and data flows. Rules are specific to the classification they received upon entering the network. The queuing mechanism allows for packets within the traffic flow to be stored until the network is ready to process it. Priority queues ensure necessary availability and minimal latency of network performance. Bandwidth management mechanisms measure and control traffic flows on the network. Preventing exceeding its capacity allows for network congestion avoidance that occurs. There are two QoS tools that are used for bandwidth management and improving network performance, which are traffic shaping and policing. Now, traffic shaping is a QoS tool that allows higher priority traffic to flow at optimum levels, even when the bandwidth is highly utilized. It reduces the chances for more important packets being delayed or dropped as they leave the interface by setting a bandwidth limit for less critical packets. A classic example of this involves granting higher priority to latency sensitive applications such as voice over IP, video streaming and real-time gaming traffic. Where getting the required packets to their destination as quickly as possible is critical for how the application performs. If it is thought in terms of applications performing services, then traffic shaping can be sent to improve the quality of a particular service. On the other hand, traffic policing can be configured for both traffic exiting and entering a network. Instead of storing packets in a temporary queue, policing will simply drop them. As a result, policing is generally regarded as less efficient. Policers are normally configured on the service provider network to discard incoming traffic that exceeds the line rate. 
what enterprises normally do is shape the traffic before it is sent to the service provider. The shaper slows messages down by queuing the messages. It then serves the shaping request, but not based on when the physical interface was available. Instead, it scheduled the messages from the shaping queues based on the shaping rate. Now, traffic shaping is generally achieved by a computer network, identifying which applications are traversing the network and then enforcing the desired traffic profile by simply capping the rate of lower priority flows by delaying and dropping some of their packets by using a buffer queue. This is referred to as application-based traffic shaping. However, when the traffic is encrypted, the underlying application may be impossible to determine. So another algorithm that is root-based traffic shaping is used. Here traffic is categorized according to some combination of source and destination IP addresses and ports and the protocol being used. Modern broadband bonding routers may be able to apply traffic shaping to specific traffic within an encrypted tunnel if the type of service bit can be set prior to being encrypted. In any case, the actual traffic shaping is then performed using some variation of either the leaky bucket algorithm or the token bucket algorithm. Both of them use FIFO buffering queues to control the traffic flow, both in terms of burstiness and average rate. Now, leaky bucket algorithm. For the leaky bucket, whenever packets confirm to the traffic profile and need to be shaped before they are transmitted out of the network, they are placed into a buffering queue or bucket. The bucket leaks packets at a constant rate determined by the traffic shaping policy, which is essentially the allowed bandwidth for a given traffic type. If the host tries to send these packets above the allowed bandwidth, they will be dumped into a leaky bucket and then leak out at the desired fixed rate. Similarly, if the traffic is bursty and the attempts to send many packets exceed the traffic profile, the leaky bucket will average out this burstiness and instead drip the packets at a desired rate. The leaky bucket is a very simple and effective method of shaping traffic, but it does have a significant shortcoming. If data is being poured into the bucket faster than the bucket is leaving, then at some point the bucket will fill up and additional packets cannot be added, leaving them to be discarded. To address this shortcoming, the token bucket algorithm made a few changes. Now looking into token bucket, it accumulates tokens at a fixed rate. The tokens represent a given number of bytes of data. When the system is ready to send a packet that needs to be traffic shaped, it removes the requisite number of tokens from the bucket and sends the packet on its way. If there are insufficient tokens available, the given data may be held until there are enough tokens available. It may be also sent along with a flag to indicate that this data does not conform to the specified traffic profile, where it may be delayed at a later point or it may be simply dropped outright. The token bucket therefore allows for some burstiness, since as tokens accumulate in the short term bandwidth is essentially increased in proportion to the number of tokens. Note that in both the cases, excessive ingestion of packets for a long period of time will cause packets to be dropped from the buffer without being transmitted over the wire and this will in turn regulate the rate of flow if the flow has an application level flow control or it is using some transport protocol that implements the rate control such as in case of TCP. Now this is the diagram showing a leaky bucket where traffic is buffered into the bucket and the water dripping out of the bucket at a constant rate, that is the packets. Now looking into the logic that will be implemented here, now this is an example showing the sample input that I have given in the program is going to be discussed ahead. Now I have assumed that the bucket size is 3, the outgoing rate will be 2, and the number of inputs as 5. Now taking these cases, 
I'll be discussing how in each step the status of bucket can be calculated. Let the first packet have a size of 5. So we know that the size of bucket is 3. Currently we have 3 empty spaces in the bucket. Since there are 5 incoming packets, 5 minus 3, 2 packets need to be dropped because only 3 can be accommodated in the bucket. Also note that from the rest 2, we also know that the outgoing rate is 2. This is the 2 that is the number of packets dropped and there are 3 packets in the bucket. The outgoing rate being 2, we have 3 minus 2 that is 1 packet left in the bucket because the other 2 were outgoing. Now we have the second packet which is of size 4. Bucket has 1 packet in it and 2 vacant spaces. So 4 minus 2, 2 packets need to be dropped. Again, the number of packets in the bucket will be 3 now. From that, since the outgoing rate is 2, we need to remove 2. So, 3 minus 2, 1. Bucket will be left with 1 packet. Now, the third packet incoming is 3. Bucket already has 1 packet. And there are 2 vacant spaces. So, 3 minus 2, 1 packet needs to be dropped. Bucket status again is 3. From that, we know that the outgoing rate is 2. So, 3 minus 2. Therefore, 1 packet will be left in the bucket. Now, going for the fourth input, which is packet 2. We know that the bucket already has 1 packet and 2 vacant spaces. Incoming is 2. So, it correctly fits in the bucket. Bucket has 3 packets now. Since the outgoing rate is 2, we subtract 2 from 3, which is left with 1. So, bucket has 1 packet. Now, the last input is of size 1. We have 1 packet here and 2 vacant spaces. Since there is only 1 input, we can easily accommodate that. So, the current status of bucket will be 2 packets. Since the outgoing rate is 2, these 2 packets will also be taken out. Then, the finally, the status of bucket will be empty. Now looking to the same logic in the program. First of all, there is a checking on how the incoming packet will affect the bucket status. The incoming packet is stored in in and b size is the bucket size and bucket will be storing the status of the bucket. First we will see whether the incoming packet is having a size less than or equal to the bucket size minus the status of bucket then only it can be accommodated in the bucket. Else what happens is we will drop off some of the packets. Now what is dropped will be the difference of the input packet and the difference of difference between the bucket size and status. And accordingly the status of the bucket will be updated in the case of dropping of packets. Then after that there is also one more case where we need to update the status of the bucket after the outgoing of packets. That is done here. What happens here is the outgoing rate will be simply subtracted from the bucket status and it will be updated accordingly. Now this is the program for the same. Bucket size is B size. Number of inputs is stored in N. Outgoing rate is stored in out. Now there is a while loop with a limit of N being not 0. So, each iteration will subtract n by 1. The incoming packet size is entered. Then the checking that we discussed before is done here. Seeing if the bucket can accommodate it or not. If it cannot, then it will be dropped and the bucket status will be updated accordingly. After the outgoing rate, the bucket status is again updated and after that it is displayed. So, after all these steps, the number will be subtracted. Number of inputs will be subtracted by 1. That is, n will be subtracted by 1. So, it repeats until the loop is exited.
Now this is a sample output of the code that I have discussed here. We enter the bucket size, number of inputs and the outgoing rate. Then for each iteration the loop will read the incoming packet size. It is 5. So it displays the incoming packet size and the drop number of packets. Then the bucket status and the bucket status is again displayed after the outgoing. So this is repeated for all the outputs. For all the incoming packets. Now we'll look into a demo of the same. This is the program. Then in the terminal, we'll compile the program. Program name is leakybucket.c. After the successful compilation, the program is run. It's asking for the bucket size, which will be 3. And the number of inputs, which will be 5. And the packet outgoing rate, which will be 2. Each of the input, when given, it will give us the status of the bucket and packets dropped. This will repeat under all, all the Five inputs have been given. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.